Number one, watching the Beatles rock out on the The Ed Sullivan Show. Watching the Beatles rock out on The Ed Sullivan Show was a pivotal moment for many Americans, especially for those who were kids in 1964. Back then, television was a staple in most households, and if your parents owned one, chances are you were glued to the screen that fateful night when the Fab Four made their American debut. For those lucky viewers, witnessing the Beatles perform live on The Ed Sullivan Show was nothing short of transformative as the iconic quartet belted out tunes like All My Loving, Till There Was You, She Loves You, I Saw Her Standing There, and I Want to Hold Your Hand, it felt like the entire world had shifted on its axis. The energy emanating from the television screen was electric, pulsating with the raw talent and infectious charisma of John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr. Each note they strummed, each lyric they sang, seemed to reverberate through the hearts and minds of millions of viewers across the nation. For many young fans, this wasn't just a performance, it was a revelation. It marked the beginning of a cultural phenomenon that would shape music, fashion, and youth culture for years to come. The Beatles weren't just another band, they were a force of nature, sweeping across the collective consciousness with a tsunami of Beatlemania. In the aftermath of that historic television appearance, posters of the Fab Four adorned bedroom walls, haircuts were styled to mimic their iconic mop tops, and guitars were hastily purchased in hopes of emulating their musical prowess. The Beatles didn't just capture the hearts of a generation, they ignited a revolution. But what made that moment truly special wasn't just the music. It was the sense of unity and shared experience it fostered. Families gathered around their television sets, neighbors crowded into living rooms, and strangers struck up conversations about the performance on street corners. In a world that often felt divided, the Beatles had a rare gift for bringing people together. Even now, decades later, the memory of that night lingers in the collective consciousness as a symbol of hope, joy, and the enduring power of music to transcend barriers and touch the soul. So, if you were lucky enough to witness the Beatles rock out on The Ed Sullivan Show, count yourself among the fortunate few who bore witness to a moment that changed the world forever. Number two, drinking Tang. Tang, that fluorescent orange concoction, doesn't exactly scream gourmet. It's a simple powder you mix with water transforming it into a sweet, sugary drink that can make your teeth ache just thinking about it. And let's be real, there's nothing remotely healthy about it. Sugar is the main ingredient, followed closely by fructose. Yet, despite its lack of nutritional value, Tang managed to secure a place in the hearts of many, thanks in part to its association with astronaut John Glenn's historic journey around the Earth in 1962. When news broke that Glenn was sipping Tang in space, suddenly every kid wanted to get their hands on it. After all, if it was good enough for astronauts venturing into the great unknown, it surely had to be good enough for us, right? Reflecting on this phenomenon, it's fascinating how the allure of Tang transcended its taste and nutritional content. It became more than just a beverage, it became a symbol of adventure and exploration. Kids everywhere imagine themselves as intrepid space travelers, fueling their imaginations with every gulp of that neon orange liquid. Looking back, it's easy to see how marketing and cultural influences played a significant role in shaping our perceptions of Tang. Its association with space exploration tapped into our innate sense of curiosity and wonder, making it more than just another drink it became a gateway to a universe of possibilities. Despite its humble origins and questionable ingredients, Tang managed to capture the collective imagination of a generation. It reminds us that sometimes the appeal of a product lies not in its practicality or nutritional value, but in the stories and associations we attach to it. So the next time you see a glass of Tang, Take a moment to appreciate the journey it represents, from the depths of Earth 
to the vast expanse of space. Number three, playing with Barbie. Barbie, the iconic doll introduced in 1959, truly captured the hearts of girls across the globe in the 1960s. With her fashion forward style, inspired by supermodel Twiggy and her innovative bendable legs, Barbie became more than just a toy. She became a cultural phenomenon. During this era, Barbie wasn't the only thing making waves. In 1962, astronaut John Glenn made history with his first trip around the globe. What caught the attention of every kid wasn't just his remarkable journey, but the revelation that he had been consuming Tang, a powdered orange flavored drink during his mission. Suddenly Tang became more than just a beverage. It became a symbol of space exploration and adventure. For children of the 60s, seeing an astronaut like John Glenn endorsing Tang made it an instant hit. If it was good enough for someone exploring the vast unknowns of space, then surely it was good enough for us, right? Tang quickly found its place in households across America, becoming a staple on breakfast tables and in lunch boxes. The appeal of Tang wasn't just its association with astronauts, it was also its vibrant orange color and tangy flavor that kids couldn't resist. Drinking Tang became more than just quenching thirst. It was a way to feel connected to the awe-inspiring world of space travel, even if just for a moment during breakfast. As children played with their Barbies, they might have imagined their dolls embarking on their own space adventures, fueled by Tang and endless imagination. Barbie wasn't just a toy anymore. She was a companion on these imaginative journeys, inspiring dreams of exploration and discovery. Looking back, the connection between Barbie and Tang might seem random, but in the cultural landscape of the 60s, it made perfect sense. Both represented innovation, aspiration, and a sense of limitless possibilities. Whether through fashion or space age beverages, the 60s were a time of embracing the new and daring to dream beyond the confines of reality. Number four, watching American Bandstand. American Bandstand, hosted by the iconic Dick Clark, holds a special place in the hearts of those who grew up in the vibrant era of the 1960s. Fondly dubbed America's oldest teenager, Dick Clark brought us a weekly dose of musical excitement and cultural phenomenon that transcended mere entertainment. For countless kids, tuning in to American Bandstand wasn't just a pastime. It was a ritual, a shared experience that bonded us in rhythm and harmony. Week after week, American Bandstand introduced us to a plethora of musical talents, serving as a gateway to the soul-stirring sounds of artists like Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder, Sonny and Cher, and Tina Turner. These were the voices that filled our living rooms, inspiring us with their melodies and lyrics, and shaping our musical tastes for years to come. Yet, American Bandstand was more than just a platform for musical discovery. It was a cultural touchstone that mirrored the spirit of its time. Through the medium of television, it showcased not only the diversity of musical genres, but also the evolving dance crazes that swept across the nation. From the infectious energy of the loco motion to the rhythmic beats of the Watusi and the playful moves of the mashed potato, American Bandstand provided a window into the pulse of youth culture. As we watched, mesmerized by the performers on screen, we didn't just witness music, we became part of a collective experience, dancing along in our living rooms, mirroring the steps of our favorite stars. American Bandstand wasn't just about the music, it was about the sense of community it fostered, the shared joy of coming together to celebrate our love for rhythm and melody. Number five, following the race to break Babe Ruth's home run record. In 1961, baseball enthusiasts were treated to an electrifying season as Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle of the New York Yankees engaged in a thrilling competition to surpass Babe Ruth's legendary record of 60 home runs in a single season. The anticipation surrounding this historic race gripped the nation, injecting an unparalleled level of excitement into the sport. As the regular season reached its climax, all eyes were on Maris and Mantle as they relentlessly pursued Ruth's seemingly unattainable milestone. 
Each home run brought them closer to etching their names in baseball immortality, fueling the fervor among fans and media alike. Then came October 1st, a date etched in the annals of baseball history. It was the final game of the regular season, and Maris found himself standing at the plate, poised to make history. With the tension palpable in the air, Maris connected with the ball, sending it soaring over the outfield fence for his 61st home run against the Boston Red Sox. In that pivotal moment, a crescendo of sound erupted from the stands, reverberating throughout the stadium. The crowd erupted into a deafening roar, echoing the collective excitement and anticipation that had been building throughout the season. For Maris, standing at home plate, it must have been a surreal experience, a fleeting moment of stillness amidst the cacophony of cheers and applause. As Maris embarked on his triumphant jog around the bases, the significance of his achievement reverberated far beyond the confines of Yankee Stadium. His record-breaking feat symbolized more than just a numerical milestone. It represented the culmination of months of dedication, perseverance, and unwavering determination. Reflecting on that historic day, one can't help but marvel at the indelible impact of Maris's accomplishment on the sport of baseball. His journey serves as a testament to the enduring spirit of competition and the profound bond between athletes and fans. In breaking Babe Ruth's home run record, Maris etched his name alongside the legends of the game, leaving an indelible mark on baseball history for generations to come. Number six, watching TV on gargantuan televisions. Back in the 60s, the idea of today's sleek flat screen TVs would have been utterly unimaginable. For us, television sets were behemoths housed in massive wooden enclosures that practically doubled as furniture. These mammoth contraptions took up so much space that you could practically set up a Thanksgiving feast on top of them with room to spare for the whole family. Moving one of these TVs from room to room was a Herculean task. It wasn't something you did on a whim or by yourself. Oh no, if you wanted to relocate your TV, you needed an army of burly individuals to assist you. Even then, it was a feat akin to moving a small elephant. But despite their unwieldy nature, there was something charming about those old TVs. Maybe it was the ritual of gathering around them with family and friends, the anticipation of watching our favorite shows together. Or perhaps it was the sheer novelty of having such a technological marvel in our homes, even if it did take up half the living room. Nowadays, we've traded those colossal TVs for sleek, modern screens that hang effortlessly on our walls. They may lack the nostalgic charm of their predecessors, but they offer unparalleled clarity and convenience. We no longer need a team of strongmen to help us move our TVs. Instead, we can simply slide them across the wall with the touch of a finger. Yet, as we bask in the glow of our high definition displays, let's take a moment to remember the giants that came before them. Those towering behemoths may have been cumbersome, but they were also symbols of a bygone era, a time when watching TV was a communal experience and the screen itself was the centerpiece of the room. And while technology may have evolved, the memories we made gathered around those gargantuan televisions will always hold a special place in our hearts. Number seven, riding around on banana bikes. The banana bike, with its iconic high-rise handlebars and sleek design reminiscent of a chopper motorcycle, holds a special place in the hearts of many who grew up in the 1960s and 1970s. Manufactured by Schwinn starting in 1963, this bike quickly became the envy of neighborhoods everywhere, earning its status as the coolest ride on the block. One of the key features that endeared the banana bike to kids was its padded seat, which offered a level of comfort previously unseen in bicycles of its time. The elongated frame not only provided ample space for riders, but also allowed for a more relaxed riding position, contributing to its popularity among children seeking adventure on two wheels. What set the banana bike apart from its predecessors was its ability to accommodate more than one rider. 
Whether it was cruising down suburban streets or tearing through dirt paths in the countryside, the banana bike became a symbol of camaraderie and shared experiences among friends. The thrill of riding together, wind in their hair, was unmatched by any other childhood pastime. However, as trends in cycling evolved, the banana bike gradually lost its appeal with the emergence of BMX and mountain bikes. These newer, more versatile models captured the imagination of a new generation, relegating the once beloved banana bike to nostalgia. Yet for baby boomers and those who experienced the joy of riding a banana bike during their formative years, no other bicycle could ever replicate the idyllic memories associated with this classic ride. It wasn't just a mode of transportation, it was a symbol of freedom, adventure, and the carefree spirit of youth. Number eight, wearing go-go boots. In 1964, the fashion world witnessed the emergence of low-heeled mid-calf boots. However, it wasn't until Nancy Sinatra's iconic hit, These Boots Are Made For Walking, stormed the charts in 1966 that go-go boots solidified their status as a must-have fashion accessory for girls everywhere. The song's catchy lyrics and Sinatra's bold attitude epitomized the spirit of the swinging 60s, and go-go boots became synonymous with empowerment and style. But what was it about these boots that captured the imagination of an entire generation? For starters, they exuded an aura of confidence and rebellion. With their sleek design and distinctive silhouette, go-go boots symbolized freedom and individuality. They were more than just footwear. They were a statement, a declaration of independence in an era marked by social change and upheaval. Moreover, the practicality of go-go boots cannot be overstated. In an age where women were breaking free from traditional gender roles, these boots offered both style and functionality. The sturdy heel provided comfort and stability, allowing women to navigate the bustling city streets with ease. Whether strutting down the sidewalk or hitting the dance floor at a crowded club, go-go boots were the perfect companion for any occasion. But perhaps the most compelling allure of go-go boots lay in their ability to transcend boundaries. Regardless of age, race, or social status, women from all walks of life embrace this iconic footwear. From fashion-forward teenagers to sophisticated career women, everyone wanted to get their hands on a pair of go-go boots. It was a symbol of unity, a shared experience that brought women together in solidarity and sisterhood. And let's not forget the undeniable influence of pop culture. From movies to television shows, go-go boots were everywhere, cementing their place in fashion history. They became a staple accessory for iconic characters like Emma Peel from The Avengers and Barbarella, played by Jane Fonda. These on-screen heroines embodied the essence of femininity and strength, and their choice of footwear spoke volumes about their character and confidence. Number nine, having an easy bake oven. The easy bake oven, a staple in many childhood, symbolizes the excitement of taking on adult responsibilities in a playful way. Introduced by Kenner Products in 1963, this iconic toy offered kids the opportunity to bake their own treats with ease. Complete with recipes for cookies, cakes, and other delights, it ignited culinary creativity in countless young minds. As I reminisce about the Easy Bake Oven, I can't help but recall the joy it brought to me and many others during our formative years. It wasn't just a toy, it was a gateway to a world of culinary exploration. The anticipation of waiting for those tiny treats to bake was almost palpable, and the satisfaction of enjoying the finished product was unmatched. According to the National Easy Bake Oven Day website, over 23 million Easy Bake Ovens have been sold to date. This staggering number is a testament to the enduring appeal of this beloved toy across generations. It transcended mere entertainment. It fostered a sense of independence and accomplishment in young chefs in training everywhere. What made the Easy Bake Oven truly special was its ability to instill confidence and creativity in children. 
As we followed the simple instructions and watched our creations come to life, we gained valuable skills that would serve us well into adulthood. It wasn't just about baking, it was about learning, experimenting, and embracing the joy of discovery. Even now, as I reflect on my time spent with the Easy Bake Oven, I can't help but feel a sense of nostalgia and gratitude. It may have been a simple toy, but its impact was profound. It taught me that cooking isn't just about following recipes, it's about passion, imagination, and the simple pleasure of sharing something homemade with others. Number 10, playing with troll dolls. Troll dolls, those whimsical little creatures with their vibrant hair and quirky expressions, have captivated the hearts and imaginations of children for generations. Originating from the creative mind of a Danish woodworker in the late 1950s, these dolls were initially intended to bring good luck to their owners. However, it was not their purported mystical properties that endeared them to children of the 1960s. Rather, it was their uniquely charming appearance and tactile appeal. As Life Magazine astutely noted, there was something inexplicably comforting about the tangled mops of unruly hair that adorned these diminutive figures. For many children of that era, running their fingers through the coarse strands of a troll doll's hair became a soothing ritual, providing a sense of reassurance and comfort in an often tumultuous world. Indeed, the allure of troll dolls extended far beyond mere playthings. They became companions, confidants, and sources of solace for countless children. Whether nestled amongst a collection of toys or perched atop a nightstand, these quirky little creatures held a special place in the hearts of their young owners. For some, the appeal of troll dolls lay in their ability to spark imaginative play and storytelling. With their colorful outfits and whimsical features, these dolls served as catalysts for elaborate adventures and fantastical scenarios dreamed up by imaginative young minds. From enchanted forests to far off galaxies, the possibilities were endless with a trusty troll doll by one side. Yet, perhaps the true magic of troll dolls lay in their simplicity. In an increasingly complex and technologically driven world, these humble playthings offered a sense of nostalgia and innocence hearkening back to a time when joy could be found in the simplest of pleasures. Whether spending hours combing through their hair or staging elaborate tea parties, children found joy in the uncomplicated companionship of their beloved troll dolls.